What happens when California's most important water source slowly disappears? We might be about to find out. These atmospheric rivers are no small matter. They supply up to 50% of the annual rainfall for California and other West Coast regions. But new research shows they've already moved northward by 400 to 700 miles over the last 40 years. That's not just a small shuffle on the map. It's a full-on climate migration. And it's happening faster than expected. At the heart of this puzzle is a strange patch of water in the Pacific Ocean called the Cold Tongue. Unlike the rest of the world's oceans, which are warming due to climate change, this eastern slice of the tropical Pacific is cooling. In fact, while the western Pacific has warmed about 1 degree Celsius over the last few decades, the cold tongue has cooled by about 0.5 degrees Celsius. That's a 1.5 degrees Celsius temperature swing across the Pacific Basin. A massive difference that climate scientists never predicted. Climate models, which have accurately forecasted many of the global trends we now see, actually said the cold tongue should warm faster than average. Instead, the opposite is happening. So either the models are wrong, or we're missing something big. This discrepancy isn't just academic. The temperature contrast between the western and eastern Pacific drives a massive conveyor belt of wind known as the Walker Circulation. And right now, that circulation is getting stronger, not weaker, as we expected in a warming world. Here's why that matters. A stronger walker circulation means stronger trade winds blowing from east to west across the Pacific. Those winds push warm surface water toward the western Pacific, supercharging storms over Southeast Asia and Oceania. Meanwhile, on the eastern side, the extra upwelling of cold water reinforces the cold tongue even more, a self-perpetuating cycle. This intensification isn't isolated. It sends out ripples that shift jet streams, especially during winter. One major effect? Those atmospheric rivers that once poured rain over California and the southwest are now getting nudged northward. They're still bringing rain, just not where we need it most. Atmospheric rivers are like airborne aqueducts. They form in the tropics, gather moisture over warm ocean waters, then arc thousands of miles toward land, dumping torrential rainfall wherever they land. Think of them as flying rivers made of water vapor. In California, these rivers deliver half of the state's annual water supply. That water feeds 39 million people, supports an $18 billion agricultural economy, and replenishes reservoirs that sustain much of the American West. But now, the latest data shows that these storms are reaching farther north, into Canada and even up to the Arctic. While that may sound like good news for some regions, it's a disaster in waiting for others. More moisture falling as warm rain in the Arctic means more sea ice melt, more permafrost thaw, more methane release, and more acceleration of climate change. Closer to home, it means drier soils, smaller snowpacks, and more strain on water supplies for California and the Colorado River Basin. Warm rain in the Arctic doesn't just melt snow, it directly warms the atmosphere too. That's because water vapor is itself a powerful greenhouse gas. The more moisture we move into the Arctic, the more warming we get. And that warmth speeds up sea ice loss. Less sea ice means darker ocean water, which absorbs even more sunlight. That accelerates warming even further. It's a runaway feedback loop. Even more concerning, the changes in atmospheric rivers can affect major global systems like the Atlantic Meridional Overturning Circulation, one of Earth's key heat distribution engines. A warmer Arctic increases the risk that AMOC could slow down or collapse, which would throw global climate patterns into chaos. This isn't some abstract model prediction. 
California is already seeing the results. Yes, atmospheric rivers still hit the state, sometimes with devastating floods like we saw in 2022 and 2023. But overall, they're becoming less frequent. And for a region already facing the worst drought in over a thousand years, that's deeply alarming. The Colorado River Basin, which provides water to over 40 million people and countless farms, is also at risk. If these rain systems continue to shift northward, the Southwest's already fragile water system could collapse under the strain. Imagine farmland without irrigation, cities rationing water year-round, power plants shutting down because their cooling systems depend on dwindling rivers. It's not just inconvenient, it's existential. So what now? Scientists are racing to understand whether this shift in atmospheric rivers is a temporary anomaly or part of a deeper, long-term trend driven by human-caused climate change. At the center of that mystery is the Pacific Cold Tongue. If it keeps cooling, the walker circulation will keep strengthening. If the circulation keeps strengthening, the jet stream keeps shifting. And if that continues, our water supply may never return to what it once was. The terrifying part? Climate models don't fully understand why this is happening. And if the models can't predict what's coming next, how can we prepare? Some researchers think we'll have answers within a year. Others caution it could take longer. But what's clear is this. The climate system is changing in ways we didn't expect. And the clock is ticking. This is iTech. And you've just seen how one mysterious patch of water in the Pacific might reshape the climate for billions of people. And before you go, subscribe if you want to stay on the edge of science, tech, and our planet's future.